All right, so let's get into chronological order, following along with our trips here. The last trips were the series of bad trips, right? And so this is, um, these are basically the trips that that got me, that were where I got after them, you know, um, how I got over it, how I changed my thinking, and how I was able to break through. Now, See, it's it's really interesting because when I was having the bad trips, I mean, I realized right away that it was my fault that I was having the bad trips, right? Um, the bad trips are, uh, well, they're they're basically usually your fault if you're ha if you're having problems with bad trips. Um, you should probably see what you're doing and you should probably try to change something there you know what I mean um, it's like are you going out in the middle of the night you know and tripping <laughs> um, at some strangers house or at uh, or you know or with people that you don't know you know I mean that's obviously your fault then if you're gonna if, if you're in that situation and then you have a bad trip you know what I mean um, it, it goes to kind of show the importance of set and setting of having a trip room of having a um, you know a trusted trip sitter or somebody that you trust tripping with you a, a friend a best friend you know it's also important of having your ceremony you know when you have your it, it's almost like when you take the trip more seriously that's when you are able to break through and have more fun you know what I mean you gotta you your preparation up to the um, the trip itself and everything that you're doing just at the start at the beginning of the trip that's the important stuff that's gonna lead to the like the really really great stuff you know if you do it right um, you can reach incredible, incredible places. And so, I mean, that's the whole reason I'm making this this uh, podcast is right is, well, for one, I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to remember and put together all the trips in order because like I said, I, I, I believe they play out very archetypically. And I believe there are trips that I went through that you don't have to go through too. I think you can skip some of these. Or you can at least condense them into a smaller set if you understand where you're at when you have them. So when you have that bad trip, maybe you only need one if you can figure out, you know, okay, this was supposed to happen, this is why it happened. You know and this is where I need to go from there and that's the whole point of this this um, this specific episode right here of the podcast is is oop, drop my phone <clears throat> um, is is basically you know you realize I realized that the bad trips were my fault that I was holding on to anger resentment that I was also blaming myself you know for all my problems in life and those things you can't take with you into the next space that you go to. So, um, so what, what I ended up doing is I ended up finding this really spiritual song on, um, on YouTube. It's, it's called In the House of Stone and Light it's by a guy named Martin Page. And it's just this really like early 90s pop rock kind of or light rock you would say something like that fits in kind of with the Phil Collins stuff actually I think Phil Collins does the drums on that song so it, it, it's one of those type of songs and um, it's basically what I was listening to kind of that point in time and um, I still listen to it, that kind of stuff when I trip uh, a lot of things like Oh, let me think. A little bit of Dire Straits, a little bit of Meatloaf, uh, kind of like late '80s, early '90s light rock, like things like Heaven Is a Place on Earth. Um, 
I don't know, just, just some of maybe a little bit of a little bit of goo goo dolls is in there. A little bit of like Rob Thomas. You know, just kind of these like you know, nothing too they're very kind of almost almost just like innocent fun songs, you know. Uh, a great one is um that you can call me Al by um was it Paul Simon from Simon and Garfunkel? That's a great song. Um, so I started changing, so I, I changed up what music I was listening to. Basically, I heard that, that song while I wasn't tripping in the House of Stone and Light, and I, I was like, that's a really good song, you know what I mean? And so I, I ended up tripping, and I basically just listened to that song the whole the whole night almost you know i listened to a few other songs like here and there but i basically listened to that song the majority of the night just i had it on repeat for a while probably for a good hour maybe even two hours I'll tell you something like that it's just a really really spiritual song you know and it's really you know it's not theological or anything like that there's um it's it's the themes are very Christian in nature, but he's also talking about other spiritual practices as well. You know, he's talking about Native American stuff. He's also talking about some Buddhist type stuff. You know, he mentions Mount Kali. You know, that, I mean, that's the first line in the song. Uh, it's Mount Kali. So, um, you know, it's um, it's just a very very spiritual song and I ended up like while I was listening like I'm going through the comments seeing what other people are saying I'm also I also looked up the story of why he created the song and how he created the song and everything like that very incredible stuff and um, and it and because he was going through a hard time in his life kind kind of or he felt fed up with how he was doing things before and he wanted to move on and do something for you know um i don't know more so for him spiritually and so the, and any, anyways i mean you guys can look up that if you guys want to but anyways the, po the point is is you know it was it's just a it's a very powerful song and it really was ingrained into me mostly due to this trip and um it helped me change my way of thinking and made me come back to a more theological based um, viewpoint when it came to how I was treating the mushrooms. This is why, this right here is why the, the trip ceremony, the psychedelic, you, you should have a trip ceremony or, or a psychedelic ceremony. Because once you take this stuff seriously, you're gonna be able to break through, you know? And um, and that's the next trip that I'm about to tell you here here in just a second. Here is 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 finally breaking and pushing through because you get yourself right. You let go of the blame, um, uh, you know, on yourself, on others, because these things you can't take with you up there to you know the spirit realm, basically. Um, so. Um, let me let me plug the sponsors real quick. Um, sorry for these uh, these little sponsorship things. Uh, it's just you know I never really like doing them, but uh, I guess it's something you gotta kind of do or, or we gotta try to do or something like that. But anyways, be right back. Okay, so I, I had that trip that wasn't a bad trip now. That was after my bad trips. I had my House of Stone and Light trip is what I call it. And um, I'm sure there was, there's probably one trip between that one and the one I'm about to tell you about. I'm not really for sure. Basically, finally, my girlfriend, I got my girlfriend back over and um, she decided to trip with me again. And she, she always, she, she doesn't need as much as I do to get into the same state. I do, I've got to take like five grams. She usually only has to take like 2.5 or three and she can get to the same place I can get to. And that's what happened on this trip, um, which was, was incredible. Um, so I had mentioned how on trip six was the hotel trip with her, with the girlfriend, where basically at the end of the trip, we get into my car and we end up dying 
right? That's the end of the trip. We ended up, um, and, and we were on Golden Teachers, and we ended up, you know, growing old and dying, and we got stuck. We got stuck in eternity, right? And so we were just frozen and stuck there. And then when the trip ended, um, that was when we were unstuck. Um, so this one was different. This was the breakthrough. And this was the one where we pushed on through that. Now, to, um, uh, to go back real quick, we were probably on Golden Teachers again on this one. Because at this point in time, I was almost out, I believe, of my first, you know, batch that I had gotten of B pluses, Golden Teachers, and Treasure Coast. Now, after this, I move on, and now I'm and and I end up making Amazons, Mazatex, and Malabar Coast, which the Malabar Coasts are the one from India. Um, which, god dang, those ones kick like a mule um <laughs> anyways um so so we we must have been on golden teachers uh those are our favorites at that time those are her favorites um i think they still are to this day her favorites um but anyways so i i played for us i played instrument instrumental music again at the beginning of this trip um, it's quite often how I like to start off even now um, I got like I said I got away from the instrumental music because of those bad trips for a little while and then um, but I you still it still almost helps in the ceremony just to start with some instrumental stuff and then move into the pop rock the 80s stuff once you once you hit that point so anyways so we're out, we're on the couch. Um, we had just taken our mushrooms. And what happens is, is you start, you start to get like a, a change in body temperature or something like that. You start to feel like cold, you start to either like shiver, or you start to feel that the, the mushroom, you know, that, that come up, that, that, that rocket ship, you know, you're, you're strapped into the, or they call it a roller coaster, you know, the mushrooms, you're on the trip up, you're going up the ramp, you know, it's, it's going up to the top. When you're at, when, when that's happening, um, that's a really, really good sign because, um, it means that you're going to, you know, come out and over quick and you're going to get to the good stuff. Whereas, um, I've had a lot of trips where they're a slow build up or they're just kind of doing their own thing. And um, those ones don't lead you to as high of places as, uh, as if you can feel them coming that way. The, the trip anxiety is real, but the trip anxiety is good. If you understand what it is and you understand that that's that that's why the ceremony is important and that's why you take it seriously and that's why your trip room is important and everything like that so right there at the anxiety point the the come up anxiety so you're in a comfortable place and you understand what's going on and you know what's going to happen next and so if you got that that's a great way to get to your breakthrough point so anyways so what happened is we're laying on the couch and I'm looking at her and she is starting to grow old again, just like in the car um, from the sixth trip. She's starting to grow old. I can see her face starting to wrinkle. She's becoming pale. Her hair, her hair is black, but in this case it was turning white. Um, so she's growing real, real old. All the energy is being zapped out of us. We're like, we're like, we're crouching over. She, you know, she says that I'm getting old, that I'm becoming, becoming an old man and everything like that. And, and we're on the couch and we just can't even move almost. You know what I mean? It's just like, you just, you're just, just fading, slowly dying. And at one point in time, um, that's just what happened. We just hit that point where, okay, it's time to die. And so she, um, I remember she's on one side of the couch and she just kind of leans over and I myself, I'm on the other side of the couch and I lean over the opposite way. And when I did that, I must've closed my eyes for just a second because I don't remember any visuals or anything like that. 
But when I lifted my head back up and she lifted her head back up, all of a sudden we have energy. She looks beautiful. She looks radiant and young and um, her hair is, is, is just a, a deep, dark color. That's just, uh, just a beautiful color and everything like that. All of a sudden we are alive, you know what I mean? Like really, really, really alive. And we're no longer on earth. It's crazy. It's, 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 we're still inside the room, um, my trip room, but the room is no longer, or we're no longer like planted on earth. We have entered the, basically the spirit realm is what I like to call it. We've entered into the spirit realm. And I believe this is in the Bible. I believe this is what, um, Paul is talking about in 2 Corinthians, he says that he went up to the third heaven, right? So that implies that there's, you know, two heavens above it. Um, the third heaven, that's the spirit realm. So it's it's not where heaven, heaven is the second heaven and then God's in the first heaven, right? So the third, theoretically, this is all, the, <laughs> that stuff right there is theoretical, okay? But it makes sense though when you do it if, if you break through into that third heaven if you break through into the spirit realm um, you know the the Vikings would have called it uh, Asgard if you break through into Asgard um, you know it you know you're there you know you're no longer on earth um, you know you could describe it as you have a sixth sense um, but even that's kind of a lacking, even even that's a lacking explanation of it. You you really you really feel that you are no longer planted on the ground. Basically, I like to tell the girlfriend the way I like to explain it is our the room is our rocket ship and it is up in space right now. And basically, I like to think of my computer as the pilot. You know, you know, or my, you know, I have my chair and my computer. That's the pilot station. You know what I mean? And I use the computer to change the music and kind of change our tra trajectory. And because um, you can, a lot of people say that you can't control what happens on the mushrooms. That's not true. You can control a lot of stuff that happens on the mushrooms. You can't control everything because in the spirit realm, right? All these entities are going to do what they want to do. You know, opposite of you. But you can control where you're at and what direction you're going while you're in space, <clears throat> so to speak. Once again, oh man, like I'm trying to explain these things in the best way that I possibly can. You know, I mean, a lot of this stuff sounds like if you've never tripped before, a lot of this stuff sounds crazy. I, I always say this, you know, I'm trying to explain it in the best way I possibly can. But language breaks down when you're on the mushrooms. It absolutely breaks down and doesn't make sense anymore. I say I'm in the, you know, I say I'm in another realm. You know, I say I'm in the third heaven like that. But at the same time, I mean, I know I'm, I know I'm just in my room. You know, my little trip room that I've created and everything like that. I know that. But at the same time, I also know I'm not in my room anymore. And it just doesn't make some sense to some. Hopefully it'll make sense to others. Like I said, I'm trying to do my best to describe these things. It's not, <laughs> it's not exactly easy. Which is, and it's part of why I'm trying to do the, the trip as well. Or I'm, I'm trying to do the podcast as well. That's why I'm trying to do the podcast as well is um you know to get these things out and um so so anyways so so we're full of life we're full of energy and we're the night goes on forever i mean we're up in he we're, we're up there in the third heaven for god years it felt like it felt like we were up there for years it's just me and her are, we're playing, we're dancing, we're listening to music, we're, we're talking philosophy, we're talking um, theology, we're talking just all, I mean, about everything and anything and everything. We're talking about where we're at, we're talking about what we're doing. Um, now, it's amazing, we're talking about all this stuff, a lot of it does not come back. That's the most, that's, that's a very, very interesting thing 
when you when you have the really 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 big breakthroughs like when you're um, when you're jumping dimensions and everything like that it's it's so hard for you to bring anything back because my theory on this is 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 um, your consciousness or if you want to call it your soul or your spirit um, Quentin from the Quentin experiment on YouTube he likes to call it the the watcher right um that thing um that's what's up there that's what's actually up in the third heaven it's not your physical body your physical body is down here still on on earth but you've broken through and you no longer are are weighed down by your body right so your mind right the way i like to talk about some of this stuff is is your brain is a physical thing right um and that's and your brain stores things like your memories, um, your worldly problems. You know, it's also some of your skills. You know, like um, how to do your job and everything like that. When you break through and you're on the other realm, none of that stuff is there anymore. But at the same time, none of the stuff that is there is or that happens there is easy to bring back because it's also not ingrained in your memory so you're having you're having to to try to like slam it into your memory real quick as fast as you can when you get back um your you know your soul or your consciousness or your, if you want to call it the watcher or whatever you want to call it that thing the true you that's actually that's my favorite one that's what i like to call it the true you because it's it's you almost unleashed it's almost you in an internal sense um yeah it seems like an internal being too which is an, another interesting thing um anyways that thing um separated from your body you know it doesn't have the mind to work with in the same in the same way um so it's hard to ingrain those memories into it. So you don't remember the specifics, you know. You don't remember exactly what you talked about. You don't remember exactly, you know, everything that was said. Sometimes you don't even remember, you know, exactly where you went necessarily. And, and I'll get to that into some of the really big trips later on. So... And that's where this is all leading, you know, this breakthrough, once you break through and now you know you're there and you can move around there and you can act, uh, interact there, once you get that, then all of a sudden you can keep going and going and you can get bigger and stronger over there and you can start doing more and more stuff. And um, like when that, when that first time that me and her broke through together like that, it was amazing, I felt clear and everything like that. But the next time that me and her did it together and we both broke through, all of a sudden I knew I knew not only exactly where I was, but exactly what I could do from the last time. And I could bring that on forward. Because um, that being that um, the true you does have its own memories, um, which, is, which is interesting. Because uh, there were things that I, I had forgotten for a while and when I tripped again last and I got there, all of a sudden I was able to bring back memories that I had previously lost. Um, so that was interesting. So a lot of this stuff sounds pretty r ridiculous and cr crazy. I know, I know. Uh, it still it still boggles my mind. All this stuff boggles my mind just as much as it would boggle anybody's mind and everything. And that's why I find it so um fascinating so mystical so um that's why i want to you know keep doing it and everything and so i'm not giving up on it and everything like that and that and that's why i i find the good in every single one of my trips no matter how weird or crazy you know or outlandish you know um you try to find the good in them and it's not hard. <laughs> it's not hard to find the good in them. It seems like uh, like life has only gotten, you know, easier as time has gone on with tripping and everything like that. And um, 
And it, it's not that life itself is easier. It's not that, that the world is easier. It's just that it's easier to deal with because you realize something else. You know what I mean? You realize that this other place exists and that you can go there and that, um, you know, you, you know, it, the only way to say it is I'm, I'm almost certain that this is the place you go when you die. Um, I'm like 99% certain it's the place you go when you when you die. You know, is is this other this other realm up there, and the and the thing that goes there is that true self that I talk about. You know what I mean? Because uh, another thing I I've been doing lately is I've been aside from um, talking to a lot of people on the internet about this these things, I've also been watching a lot of. Um, a lot of YouTube videos and documentaries on things like, oh, see, out of, um, or what do they call them? Near death experiences. I've been uh, studying a lot up a lot on those, and some of the things that they say are mentioned is very, very similar to the things that I say are mentioned. It's also very very much sounds like a lot of their sound, stuff sounds like a trip report it sounds exactly like a trip report it's like a psychedelic trip report you know so i don't know the place seems too real it seems too real when you're there and when you're tripping and, and doubt creeps in when you come back by the way you know and e even now i have my doubts but I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to hold on to something I made that a promise to myself on one of my it was like probably my second to last trip or my third to last trip I made a promise to myself that no more doubting I need to hold on to this stuff because when you're there there's no doubt in your mind you you you, you just absolutely feel that it's real you know um, so Anyways, do with that with do with that one what you will. I'm gonna try to get through this next trip real quick because it's not very it's not a very important one necessarily. Um, my next trip, I ended up actually my sister ended up wanting to come and hang out with me, and um, she contacted me, which is kind of weird. Usually, you know, we don't hang out that often. You know, we hang out every once in a while, but it's 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 rare and usually we hang out with the family we usually don't hang out together so this is this is a rare instance where she wanted to come hang out with me and um i knew my girlfriend was getting off work and we were planning on tripping and so i ended up telling my sister about it you know and saying hey would you like to try some and she was totally up for it you know and so i only gave her uh 2.5 which I think is a good starting point. Honestly, the 1.5, oof. Man, I don't know. If you, looking back, my 1.5 trip, my first trip and everything, wouldn't have, I don't I don't know how much different it would have been if I would have took 2.5, to tell you the truth. But if you know you're sensitive to chemicals, you know, then maybe start off like 1.5. Um, but but 2.5 is not a bad starting place. It's a pretty good starting place. You're not going to have a bad trip on 2.5. I mean, unless you're, uh, unless you've got some real serious problems in your life. Um, <laughs> but um, so I ended up giving her that, and the night ended up going very very well for the most part. And I just. Uh, I knew they would. I had the faith at that point in time that nothing good, could, nothing but good, could come from taking mushrooms, and I still kind of have that that sentiment. You know, I know a lot of people aren't ready for psychedelics, but if you are, if you're if you're questioning whether or not you're ready for psychedelics, you probably are ready for psychedelics and everything, and you probably have, um, you know, just take them with maturity, take them take them with a little bit of respect. And everything especially you know that, that first time go ahead have fun and everything you're probably not gonna have a bad trip you know um, but if you take them with respect and everything like that um, you're guaranteed to get someplace good almost um, so anyways the sister one when when one went over well um, I basically <laughs> I ended up letting her use my trip room and me and me and the girlfriend ended up going in the living room and watching a bunch of like nature 
music videos and stuff like that. Very, very peaceful and relaxing for me and the girlfriend and everything. And then, and then my sister ended up having fun. She had a, she had another friend over with her as well that didn't trip as, but you know, they had fun together. So, um, so that was those trips. So I went through three trips tonight with you guys and they were big, they were big. And like I said, from here on out, everyone after this gets bigger and stronger and crazier, despite the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm still taking, I usually take them the same amount. Eventually I did start adding in, um, uh, THC into my trips as well. Um, I'd never done THC in my life until after I took mushrooms, you know. Mushrooms were the first drug I ever took. I mean, well, you know, if you consider them drugs. I don't know if I consider them drugs. It's almost like I consider them like a sacrament or something like that, what the Catholic Church would call a sacrament. A, uh, it's like a, a religious... Um, a religious item to be used almost like holy water when you baptize when you get baptized or something like that i know that probably sounds really bad to like a fundamentalist christian but there's there's no other way to put it i mean it's what it is you know you want to sit there and you know I know my father's kind of struggling with with it, with the fact that I'm I'm tripping and er, that I take you know take the mushrooms and I take trips and everything like that, and um, because he is this hardcore conservative fundamentalist, and it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but what he lacks is he is he lacks an openness to the fact that anything is possible you know what i mean and that's 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 my my critique of the conservative uh you know the conservative christians and everything here this is my thing the conservative christians the problem is is they're not open enough to explore the world in a different in a well not a different way but but explore the world as it is and then use their their background, their knowledge, their foundation to explain the world. And that makes more sense than, and see this is, and then now here's my critique of the left and the, and the hippies and the new age, you know, it's like you, you don't have the found, the, the hippies, the new age and the, and the liberals, you, you don't have the foundation. And so you're, you're exploring the world without the foundation, without the knowledge, without the prior history of um, I don't know um, I don't know that, that, I mean that, just that just the foundation basically you're lacking the foundation that's what the liberals lack that's what the new age people lack and that's what the um, the yeah the hippies you know and it's interesting uh, the witches also you know I mean I've been I've been thinking about this because my um my girlfriend works with with some Wiccans. <laughs> uh, I think she works with she works two jobs and she works with like one at both of them, <laughs> which is funny. Um, the thing is, is they'll never actually develop any um, any powers or any. They'll never be able to manifest anything in their life because they have nothing to offer to whoever they're praying to. You know what I mean? You want to pray to the devil or a demon or something like that and you want to try to get them well you know what the heck's the devil the devil's gonna say well I already got you so I don't care about you you know what I mean you're already on my side you know and so that's that's the point of the devils and the demons the devils and the demons they need you to give something up for them to give you anything I'm sorry I'm getting I'm getting pretty far out there right here on this one but um, one of the other things I have been watching is a bunch of exorcist um, basically not stories or anything like that I'm listening to actual Catholic um, pastors preachers whatever you want to call them archdeacons and stuff like that and there, there's a lot of videos online of these of these guys that are actually um, explaining the things that they go through and the occurrences that they encounter 
Uh, let me give you a quick example here. Uh, one of the guys I've been listening to is... His name is um, Vincent Lampert. Vincent Lampert. If you just look him up on YouTube, um, he'll go over his um, exorcisms and, and how he looks at the exorcisms and the demons and the way that they are and everything. And, and basically everything he says makes like a, just so much sense. You have no idea, especially if you've tripped before. Um, it's, uh, it's quite incredible. So anyways, I think that's about the end of this um, this little podcast here. Thanks to everybody who's watching, or I mean listening. Um, you know, I'm a little slow on getting these up onto YouTube, but uh, yeah, thanks to anybody who's watching on YouTube as well. Um, yeah, I'm way surprised at how many um, how many views I have been getting. It's um, quite extraordinary. I hope this I hope these help somebody. You know, um, either help you get through the trips. You don't necessarily need to um, start off by going through these trips in a Christian fundamentalist um, viewpoint. You could go through it in an Eastern viewpoint, and the Easterners do tell me that they get they get to similar places that I get to. Although I think in the end, I'll, I think I'll get further than they do. Or I think I, I think a few of my last of my last trips have been about as far as anybody's ever been, but I'm not, I'm not quite for sure, um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just telling you my experiences and my thoughts on these, on these podcasts, um, my, my beliefs, you know, I'm, uh, I don't want to push them off onto anybody or anything like that, you know, there could, and I am, op- I'm absolutely open to the possibility of other explanations for just about everything. I mean, I could be delusional. I said there, I, I told my, um, I told my girlfriend that on the last trip, I said, I said, I could, I could absolutely be 100% delusional. You know what I mean? I could just be like completely broken brained. It doesn't seem to be that way though. You know, I seem to be able to think clearly and concisely and in an appropriate manner. And, you know, life is, is pretty good right now. So, I mean, that's not, that's not an obvious sign that I'm delusional. You know what I mean? Um, so anyways, I'm just going to keep going with it and everything like that. Tell you guys, uh, a few of my revelations when they come up and whatnot. So let's see how many more we got to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight more. And um, you know I'm probably gonna do them like two at a time for the most part. These next two ones, see the next two ones are kind of in the middle of. I'm not exactly sure when they happened. Um, it's like I I <laughs> I wrote down the I I basically wrote these down in reverse. And then I stopped at a certain point, and then I wrote down the beginning ones until I got to a certain point, and then I'm like, oh, I know there's like some really important ones somewhere in the middle. So that's the next episode is going to be those ones. Um, I probably had like a series of probably four or five trips that, you know, that I don't fully remember, and so the order is the best that I can do and the best I can manage, and, and um, so. That's a that's very important and interesting to think about, you know, is like why I'm doing the podcast. Once I get these all out, I'm planning on just forgetting them, you know what I mean? Um, for the most part, you know, I'll just remember the themes, the things, you know. I don't know, the specifics, not necessarily. Hopefully once I get them out, I'll, they'll just be out. And then I can just either go back and listen to the podcast or hopefully it can just help somebody else in the future. So, all right, guys. Thanks for listening. Man, guys, if you guys stuck around, thanks so much. <laughs> you guys have a good night.